what's going on guys welcome back moving on to the next topic in the chapter we're now going to talk about how to get a confidence interval for a population proportion so before we were getting a confidence interval for a population mean now we're working with a proportion i feel like proportion is a lot easier to work with as you'll see there's going to be less parameters to work with and when i'm talking about a proportion what I mean is basically the percentage of items in a population that share a common characteristic. So you might be looking at all of the homes in a population and you want to see what percentage of those homes have a two car garage or maybe you'll be looking at a factory and a factory is making a product and you want to see what percentage of the products made in the factory contain a defect or contain an error, right? So basically the percentage of a population that shares some kind of characteristic. And when you're dealing with proportions, usually you're dealing with a large enough sample size. So you're always gonna be using the Z distribution. So you're not going to have to worry whether you know the population standard deviation or you don't. You're just always using a Z distribution when you're dealing with proportions. So to do a little review, basically the confidence interval, if you remember in general for a population mean was the sample mean plus or minus the margin of error. But we're not working with means anymore. Here we're going to be working with proportions. So we take the sample proportion and we're going to be adding and subtracting a margin of error in order to get that confidence interval. Now let's get a little bit more technical here. I'm going to introduce some new variables. So I'm going to let P equal the sample proportion. And remember a proportion is the percentage of items that contain a certain characteristic from the amount that you're looking at. And so what you're gonna see in the stats calculator is two inputs when you're dealing with a confidence interval. You're gonna see an input for X and an input for N. And N, as we know, it's basically the sample size that you're working with. And X is the number of items in the sample containing a, the characteristic that you're looking at. So I'll just put containing a characteristic. Right, so you might be looking at a factory and you take a sample of 1,000 items, so the N would be 1,000, and you notice that 50 of the items contain an error. Right? So the proportion, the sample proportion would be 50 over 1,000, which would be 5% or 0 0.05. Right? So that is the sample proportion P, it's equal to X over N, where X and N are these parameters over here. So the confidence interval for a population proportion, let's get a little bit more technical here. So we got the sample proportion, which we said is P, plus or minus the margin of error. Now. When we were using the Z distribution for a population mean, let me write out the margin of error then. That was Z alpha over two. And we had the standard deviation, the population standard deviation over the square root of N. That was the, um, the margin of error for a population mean. And the margin of error for a population proportion is gonna be very similar. The only thing that's gonna change is this numerator over here. Instead of a population standard deviation, what it's going to be is basically the square root of P, right, the sample proportion times 1 minus P, the sample proportion. Right, so this sample proportion, this P over here, which is always a decimal because X has to always be less than N, Notice that it's used here and it's also used in the margin of error. And that's why I was saying I feel like 
getting a confidence interval for a population proportion is a lot easier than a population mean because you're working with less variables. This P is basically being used in multiple areas. And sometimes you'll see this portion here be represented in one square root because if you're square if you're taking the square root of a numerator taking the square root of a denominator that just means you could take the square root of the whole fraction as well so sometimes you might see the margin of error shown like that right but both of these here are the exact same thing and so this is the general format always for the confidence interval when you're working with proportion. So let's show how this works through an example. So let's say from a sample of 104 homes, 36 have a two car garage, and we have to find a 90% confidence interval for the population proportion. So I'm gonna show you how to do this in two different ways, manually and then finally with the stats calculator. So if we do it manually, we know that confidence interval for a population proportion, as I just went through, it's equal to the sample proportion plus or minus the margin of error. Margin of error is Z subscript alpha over two. And then um, we'll have the square root of the pop or the sample proportion times one minus the sample proportion over the square root of N. So the first thing to figure out is what is that sample proportion? And remember, it's equal to x over n. And x is the number of items in a sample that contain a certain characteristic. And in this case, the characteristic is a two-car garage. So 36 out of a sample of 104 homes contain a two-car garage. And so when you do that in your calculator, you'd end up getting 0.3462. So I'm going to keep it to four decimal places. And so from here, what we do is we just input that for the P value. So that's going to be the sample proportion. So what this means here is that from this sample of 104 homes, 34.62% of the homes have a two car garage, right? The percentage sharing a certain characteristic. And then we'll have plus or minus. Now, what is the alpha? Since we are looking for a 90% confidence interval, alpha is going to be 1 minus 0 0.9, which gives us 0 0.1. So alpha over 2 is going to be z subscript 0 0.05, right? Which is 0 0.1 divided by 2. And then this bracket over here, we're going to have the square root of 0 0.3462 times 1 minus 0 0.3462, like that. And then this is going to be all over the square root of the sample size. Sample size in this case is 104. So it's going to be over the square root of 104. Now, this Z value, hopefully by this point, you are pretty comfortable with getting that from the Z table or from the calculator. If not, I highly recommend you go back and watch videos that I've made on how to get that. But if zero's in the middle, Z.05 is over here, where this area is 0 0.05. So you're going to have to look in the table. Remember, the table always gives you the area to the left of a certain Z score. You're going to have to look for 0 0.95. And when you look for that, or you get it from your calculator, basically it's 1.64. And when you do all of that in the calculator, this margin of error, you should get around 0 0.0767. And so to get the actual confidence interval, you do 0 0.3462 plus or minus that margin of error. And you get this over here, 0 0.2695 to 0 0.4229. And so that is the 90% confidence interval. And so what this means is that we can be 90% confident that between 
Uh, 26.95% and 42.29% of homes in the population. Now we didn't really describe what the population was in this question. So let's just assume it's maybe like a whole country. So 90% confident that between 26.95% and 42.29% of homes in the population have a two car garage. That's basically what this means in words. And then finally, if we do this with a calculator, very simple, main menu, you hit stat. Then you go to F4. F4 is basically interval, right? It's going to say I-N-T-R. And then you hit F1 because we're dealing with proportions, so we know we always have to use a Z distribution. And then you hit F3, which you're going to see is 1 uh, slash P. It's basically one proportion that you're looking at. And then you're going to get to this input screen over here. So you're going to put the confidence level, which is 0.9, right? We're looking for a 90% confidence interval. This X here is the exact same X that I described before. So the number of items in a sample sharing a characteristic, 36, N, sample size. And then when you execute that, you should get something very close to that. It might be a little bit different in the fourth decimal place just because of some rounding when I did it manually, but it should be very close. So two different ways to get the confidence interval for a population proportion. You could do it manually. Remember that margin of error is a little bit different, or you could do it with the calculator.